Um, our first speaker today is Soraya Ferreira. Uh, her presentation is called Transmedia Storytelling, Pitfalls to Avoid When Creating Stories for Immersive Media. Storytellers have at their disposal a multitude of technologies to tell their stories. This talk explores several case studies of this reality that brings challenges but also opportunities. In her presentation, Soraya Ferreira highlights through practical examples the possibilities and limitations that can exist when creating and conveying a story through various immersive media. And Soraya has a PhD in digital media and has since 2009 worked as an independent consultant with projects and training in transmedia storytelling. Welcome, Soraya. Hi. Hi. Good morning, everyone. I hope everyone can see the, the presentation, right? Okay, yeah. so let's begin. Um, okay, so this was uh, actually my presentation. This was taken in 2003 when I was doing my first short film. This was in New York City. And I know if you notice that the camera that I'm using, it's actually a film camera. So it was no, no digital back then. And now a lot of things change. Um, I have a question for you guys. So I was reading an article, a BBC article, and in the article, uh, it said that a small tribe uh, in Asia was able to survive the tsunami, a tsunami that killed a lot of people. And I was thinking to myself, why was this small tribe that lives in the middle of the forest was able to survive this disaster and other people that had more means were able, I mean, weren't able to survive. So anyone has any ideas on how this was possible? You can put on the chat or talk to me. Let's see, nothing. They saw the animals flee. Uh -huh. Very good, Karin, you are in the right direction. Any more guesses? Okay, so the, um, the, the reason why they were able to survive was because of stories. They knew stories, okay, they had kept the storytelling alive through generations and thus remembered previous tsunamis. Very well, Frederick, that's exactly it, okay? So they knew the stories from their ancestors of, okay, if this happens, you know what you need to do. For example, climb the trees and go to high places. And that's what they did when they saw the signs. And that's why they were able to survive the tsunami. So now we can see how important for us storytelling is. Uh, carrying on. When I was taking my PhD, I did a PhD workshop in the south of England. And one of the places that they took us uh, to see was the Jurassic Coast. I don't know if anyone already went there or not, but it's a beautiful place. And one particular thing caught my attention. So if you go to this park, the coastal path, you are going to have the evolution of Earth uh, as a story throughout the park. So this is how it happens. Uh, every step I take is 50 million years along. So I'm walking and as I'm walking, I'm learning the evolution of Earth. For example, this is one of my favorite um, stones that I saw. So in the next seven steps, you will walk through the evolution and extinction of the dinosaurs. So this was able to give us a perspective and it was really cool because I could do this at my own pace. So compare this experience, this immersive experience with another one that I had here in Porto. So I went with my friend and her 11 year old boy and we went to see an immersive show. And this show was amazing in terms of setting. It was amazing in terms of technology, the sound, it was really good, but there was something off. So what was happening with this show is that even though technologically everything was great, they were, uh, they were uh, showing a lot of stories. So I was actually, I was uh, at one time timing them and it was like less than three minutes and all the stories were together. So the problem with this was that it didn't have, uh, we didn't have time to um, absorb the stories and we didn't have a lot of information to create empathy and to create that link. And I can tell you how I knew this. So I knew something was off 
And the little boy that I was with, he was uh, wearing the headphones uh, while listening to the stories. But at one point, he removed the headsets and he was just walking around the room. So I immediately knew that, you know, in terms of story wise, it was lost. So one thing uh, that you should pay attention when you are creating these kinds of experiments has to do with the amount of information that you use uh, in telling one or more stories. So in this previous case, in my opinion, I think that if they used less stories and everything was the same, I think the experience would uh, work much better, okay? So sometimes it's not, oh, I want to put all the information there, Sometimes that's going, uh, that's not going to make the project work. So this is the first uh, aspect that you should pay attention. Another uh, experience that I did, this one is in Lisbon. I don't know if you ever visit this bridge, which is very similar to the San Francisco bridge in the United States. So this bridge actually is special to me because uh, the the name of the bridge is actually my birthday so i went to visit this bridge and they had something that they opened which is called pillar seven bridge experience so of course uh, the moment that i saw experience okay i was wondering okay so if it's an experience i need to go and i need to see what's happening okay so when you enter you have the um, the shop, okay, and you, this is actually beneath uh, the pillar, so you go up and you actually have a view here, you see inside the bridge some cables, you have a lot of env environmental storytelling throughout uh, the place, so you have information like this, 74,196 uh, uh, kilometers of steel wire in suspension cables, which are you know this so you have a lot of information and at the entrance there's this li little box that when you see you don't think that it's something special okay but for me it was actually one of the coolest part of this experience this was something extra so you could buy the ticket to see the the bridge beneath and you can also buy that ticket and also to have access to this VR experience. And the reason why I thought this experience was so, so cool was because of the story that they told. So they took the opportunity of this VR experience to give us something that otherwise it wasn't possible for us uh, to know and to experience. So the story of this was actually, we were one of the people in charge of, um, of making sure that the bridge was secure. So they had maintenance uh, personnel that needs to go here on top. Okay, so they need to go all the way up. And when they arrive here, they need to grab these cables that you see and they actually need to shake them to make sure that everything is stable and everything is working, okay? So this cannot be done remotely. The workers actually need to go all the way up here and test everything. So the story of this was actually, we, we start here below and then we go up. We are one of the workers. We go up, okay? We, I didn't know when I was doing this exactly where I was climbing to. So we climb and climb and climb. And then uh, they, of course, you need to be attached with, um, with a cable to the bridge to make sure that you're not going to fall. So we, we have all of that happening. And then when you arrive here at the top, it's when you actually see the view of the whole city and the bridge. And, and I can tell you that it's completely mesmerizing, okay? It was something that personally, I wouldn't be able, I didn't have the courage to personally go all the way up here and see, okay? But by doing this VR experience, it was something that I could do. So this is a project uh, that, I, that I did uh, in 2012 as part of my PhD. And this is a transmedia storytelling project. So what does this mean? It means that I'm telling a story across different platforms with the, the audience, um, with the audience help. 
um, uh, uh, the the overall story of this project was can you find the treasure so this was like a a, a, a short and easy story and then the story was um, scattered across different platforms for example you had the iphone you had the the website you had the print map you had different experiences and you had the social media you can have more information about this in a lecture that I did here. Uh, and I'm going to put this link at the end uh, of the presentation, okay? So if you want more about how this project was built, you can have that. So the transmedia storytelling is important when you have a lot of stories that you want to tell. So instead of just saying, telling, saying everything in the same platform, you have them scattered across the platforms. So here they were able to do that very well because they had the visit for the bridge, but then they also used the VR as another set of the experience. The other uh, lesson uh, that we, we need to, to think about when creating immersive experiences has to do with the learning curve, okay? Of course, this is going to depend on the audience that we have, but let me just give you an example of what happened to me. I went to Tallinn to teach at the university, and after I finished my classes, I had the afternoon off, so I went to the shopping mall and there they had the VR arcade. So this was before COVID, okay, 2019, and it was a new thing. So I went there because I wanted to have the experience of being in a VR arcade and to see how everything worked. So I arrived there and I was really lucky because I had uh, the girl helping me. She knew that it was my first time, so she was going to, to, to teach me and to show me all the different experiences. And she was, uh, she was awesome because she started, she told me, okay, the first experience that you need to do, it's this one, it's the beat the saber. And why she chose that? Because it was just for me to have the first acquaintance with um, the comments. So I had to do like this, it was really simple. And I was doing this experience. The second experience that she told me to do was this one. It's the richest plank experience. And uh, basically the story is that you need to go up high in a building. And then at the, at the top of the building, you have like a plank that you need to walk. It's like, you know, the, the pirates had to walk on the plank on the, on the ship, but here it's inside, uh, it's inside um, a, a build, it's outside the building. And this, this was actually very scary for me. I mean, even though I'm not afraid of heights, but just, you know, like seeing all of that, it's an experience. Uh, the third one that I did, Landscape Mountains, it was like I was flying and gliding. Once again, the reason why she told me to do this was just for me to know the different things that I can do in VR and the comments. The, the following experience that I did was this Google Earth VR. This was something that I really wanted to do because I saw the trailer and I wanted to see how it was to see the different places uh, in this. And then uh, I wanted to do this Westworld Awakening. The reason why I wanted to do this, it's because this is a transmit, it's part of the, uh, of the transmedia storytelling. So Westworld, as you know, it's a, a TV series. And here they have another platform, which was this VR experience. The problem that I had here, which with this Westworld uh, awakening is that it's really complicated to learn all the commands, at least for me that I was doing this for the first time. So I had to go and grab a key and I had to turn and I had to do this and that. And then at one point, uh, the girl actually told me that I had to stop because I didn't realize that the wires, I was completely tangled in the wires because I didn't uh, pay attention, okay? So I had to stop everything while she was just entangling me for all the wires and then I could continue. Uh, and then finally, we did this job simulator that was really, really fun. So here, see, I started from the simple experience and then I went into some more complicated ones. 
So the third point that you need to pay attention has to do exactly with this, with safety. And when I mean safety, it's not only physical, okay? In this, ex in this experience that I told you, I had someone that was outside, okay? And she knew it was my first time and she actually helped me out because if she wasn't there, I'm not exactly sure what would be the outcome, okay? So physical uh, safety is very important. And the other thing that it's also important has to do with the psychological safety. And how can I, I tell you about this? So I was in a conference here in Porto, and this conference was about marketing, and it had a lot of technology. It had several stands of companies showcasing their products. And in one of the company, there was one former student, okay? And the moment that he saw me, he told me, oh, professor, you need to come and you need to, to exper experience this, um, this project that I did. When I look at it, I wasn't completely 100% that I wanted to do, just because why? Okay, it was VR, so I knew about the glasses, but I had to climb a platform and they told me that I had to be secure to something. So I, wa I was like, okay, I'm not exactly sure what this is going to, to be, but of course I had to go, right? Because it's a, a former student. So of course I need to do this uh, and see what he has done. So I put my headsets, okay, I grab myself, and then the story of this VR experience, you start in the, okay, in the, in the ocean, right? And then you go all the way down until the bottom of the, of the ocean. So, and what was the problem with this experience? I think a lot of things were great, but one thing that was missing for me was, um, was the psychological safety, meaning that I didn't have a helmet. So the moment that I went down, I knew of course that I was breathing because I wasn't underneath, okay? But my brain was thinking to myself, okay, I'm going down, I'm going down, I'm going down, and how am I going to breathe? If they had put like a, a helmet or something, I will, you know, my body will feel secured. But because I didn't have that, it was a little bit tricky. Of course, they had to put, when I was going down, also sharks <laughs> happening. At one point, I was actually uh, waiting for the, 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 um, the Jaws music of Steven Spielberg, you know, uh, coming. But it was really, really cool. But I think that small detail was really important for the experience. So remember, we already saw the amount of uh, information that you put in a... In a in a project, okay? The second one has to do with the learning curve. Of course, this is going to depend on the audience that you have. And usually you have different types of audiences, okay? But pay attention to this. Safety, it's also really important. So people have an enjoyable experience. And finally, uh, I wanted to talk to you about story structure because I see a lot of projects that they have a story in them, but they don't have uh, the full story structure. So this is lacking. So one example that I can tell you is that, uh, I think it was like two years ago, there was a new museum that opened and I was actually giving training in a hotel near Lisbon. And of course, everyone was telling me, okay, Sarah, you need to go to this new museum. You need to check it out and see what you think about it. Uh, so I went after I gave my training. And as, as soon as I entered, they had this screen that was in form of a portrait. And it was a king uh, giving welcome to the people that visited the museum. So it was uh, triggered by movement. It had different languages. And it was awesome, okay? I had a king talking to me, hello, welcome, I'm this, na, 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 na. and I thought this is awesome. But I continue walking on the museum and I had this beginning of the story, I have the character, but then throughout all of the museum, I never had anything else regarding to the continuation of this story. Okay, so I only had the beginning, but I was missing the middle and the end of the story which was a shame because that beginning was really awesome. 
This is the example of just having a part of the story structure. This one is actually a much older example, but it's one that I did many, many years ago. And I still remember vividly all of this experience because it was um, so powerful. So in 1998, I visited uh, Washington DC in the United States. And one of the museums that I went was the Holocaust Memorial Museum. And when I, I don't know how it is now because this was many years ago, but when I went there, when we arrived, uh, I was 18 and they gave us a card. So the card had a picture of a child. So everyone that was visiting the museum had their own child. And the story was to find out if at the end of the visit to the museum, the child that we had, our own child, was going to survive or not. So we had a card. We start the journey through the museum. And in the journey, we start uh, seeing that everything was um, good. Every, uh, you had the neighbors playing in the streets. You heard laughter. You heard music. And then things changed. You start hearing screams, everything is very dark. Then you go through a um, gas chamber, you know, all of that, uh, of that things that they had to go through. And then at the end, there's a machine and you put your, um, your card in the machine. And that's when you find out if your child was dead or alive. I remember that mine was dead and that really had a huge impact because I saw, you know, everything that more or less the child had to go through. So I had the beginning of the story and then I had the middle, everything that she went through and then I had the end, okay? So this is an example of this story having all of the three parts. And now, to end the presentation, I wanted to show you a pilot that I did with um, a group of friends uh, at the university. So we had one month to do this pilot. And this was, we wanted to do a um, location-based augmented reality game, okay? So the, the game that we came up was this one. This was just a prototype, what I'm, um, uh, uh, what I'm showing you right now, it was called Unlocking Portal. And the, uh, this was, this used different technologies, okay? So it was divided into three parts. The first part was a trivia game. So the tourists arrived uh, to the city, in this case, the city of Porto, or they were, for example, Raya, uh, your microphone is shut down. So you have to put it on. Okay. Okay. I think now you can hear me. Something okay. happened. Sorry about that. So the first level was a trivia game. So you were arriving to your destination. You could be at the airport. You could be uh, preparing the trip, or you can be already at the hotel. And then you had to do this trivia game. Uh, this trivia game, the objective was for you to get to know a little bit about the information about the port wine, okay, which is something that it's really famous here in the city that I'm from, Porto. So you had this game, okay, trivia game, and then the second level, oops, the second level was this. So you had across the city from the hotel that you were until the the river front okay you were walking and then you were collecting these uh, barrels of wine so let me just go back <clears throat> here the map see wherever you you were you had to come and then you had to collect the barrels of wine why because at the end the objective was for you to do the third level which was to do a game where you were you had all the barrels that you collected here at the second level and then you had to bring the levels to the wine cellar the wine cellars in porto are these ones see so this is where the porto wine is stored and it's where you can go there and have tastings so second level you connect 
you you have the the wine barrels that you are collecting and then this is the third level which is a game which this game is unlocked when you arrive to the river so you go from the hotel you arrive here to the river and then this game is unlocked and this game is from this fridge to this fridge so the game has a lot of obstacles like stones, the river currents, and stuff like that, you can lose the wine barrels or you are able to ha have them remain inside the boat. And then you arrive to the, the wine cellar and then you can have a tasting. So see, this story had a beginning, middle, and an end in the three parts of the game. And then the best part, of course, was to have the wine tasting at the wine cellar, okay? So recapping, you have four things that you can pay attention when creative uh, immersive experience. So the first one is to pay attention to the amount of information that you are giving. The second one has to do with the learning curve. Okay, this is going to depend on the audience that you have in front of you and technologically what you are going to be using. The third one is safety really really important and then the fourth one has to do with a story structure if you want more information about storytelling you can go to this website story sd and you have a lot of information i'm going to put on the chat that link for the webinar on transmedia storytelling if you want to know more about this and now i'm looking forward to your questions thank you Thank you, Soraya. Uh, I don't think there are any questions so far in the chat, so please ask questions. And I have one to start with, if that's okay. <laughs> yeah. um, you mentioned that from the beginning, we often have like lots of pieces of information to mm -hmm. where do we start? How could you give some advice and methods on we have places and people and the objects and how do yeah. we get some structure into to this? Yeah. Thank you. That's a great question. So I'll, I'll let you know the, the, the one that I showed you, Travel Plot. I'll, I'll let you know how I started. So I knew from start that I wanted to do a transmedia project. And the way that I did it was first, I read all the material that I had. So I read more than 50 books. I read all of them. And then I, I thought about how was I going to organize it. So what I did was to organize in periods, in historical periods. And so I selected the ones that were more important for, for the story of the city, because we are talking about since the Romans were here until today. Okay, so it's a lot of years. So I selected those key points, historical events. And then within these historical events, I selected the key people that were uh, connected with these key events. Okay, so I had those people. And then I also uh, selected the key locations where those events took place, okay? So it was like a triangle and I needed, for example, and then another thing, for example, I had my uh, target audience. So I knew that I was doing this mainly for the UK tourists because they are the ones that visit Porto. And I wanted to also to do to the Brazilian tourists. So for example, I chose one, one character historical character that was really important for the Brazilian audience. So I knew I had to have him. And then that's how I was connecting all the dots. And that's how I made the story. Great, thanks. You're now welcome. we have one question in the chat. Uh -huh. what, ki what kinds of game testing did you do and how did that affect the process? The first one that I showed, Travel Plot, I didn't have any testing just because I didn't have a team. Okay, I was doing mostly everything by my, my myself. So, and I didn't have a lot of budget. Okay, so I only did the whole prototyping and then I, I gave it to a team to develop it. And I actually didn't do a lot of testing. This one, the last one that I showed, uh, it was a prototype and uh, and it, we, we were going to start testing, but then we had other projects, so we didn't. Uh, continue uh, past the prototype, but we did publish a paper on this. Thanks. Um, have, have you tried to combine like, because this is kind of a static experience with uh, real 
time events like in social media or yes, or... yes. The, the 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 travel pot one let me show you it had two ways of doing the it has it had two two ways of doing the project so it was the active way of doing the project and this means that you were in Porto and you are you had the app and you were going to the locations and you were going to see if the treasure was there or not so this was the active way to do then you had the passive way to do, which was with the main protagonist. So the main protagonist was Peter. And throughout the three months that this project took place, he went to all the locations. So the people that weren't in Porto, they could follow the journey on the social media. And it was funny because on Twitter, at one point, people started interacting with the character. Okay, so I, I said, I mean, the character said that, oh, I'm going to Doro. And then people were like, oh, I'm loving the pictures. I want more. You need to go to this place and that place. And then, of course, I went to the computer and I was searching for my pictures and put and all of that. So I had that interaction with the audience, with the character. If you want more information about this, my whole PhD, I can put on the chat also the link, but you have uh, almost, uh, I mean, more than 350 pages on how I built this and, and all the results, okay? So I can put on the chat and you can see all of this, okay? Great, thanks. We have lots of time for questions, yeah. so I hope you're yeah, up no, for I it. think I have here more. Yes. Yeah. Which is the psychological safety is interesting. I think many people hesitate to try. Do you have any smart advice for making people feel safe when trying VR or AI? I hear, I mean, for me, it's just seeing the reactions of people, okay, and experience the project and having different people to to to, uh, to to do the test. Because for example, when I was telling you about that little kid that lost he removed the headsets in the middle of the experience and just went exploring so he lost the story uh when i finished that i was talking with the people that were selling the tickets you know just talking with them and then they told me oh that's normal that's uh, the little kids do that they in the middle they just take off the headphones and then that's it so that's not normal as you know when the kids are listening to a story they are really into it right so you know that something is wrong. So just uh, test. This is just testing. And then the other one is what do you think is the most common pitfall in creating immersive experiences? Uh, I mean, I, I don't think I can name one. I can name a few like I, like I did here in the in the in the talk. I mean, for me, the one the thing that I'm most connected with has to do with storytelling because it's my area of expertise. Okay. And, and sometimes I also think that um, here we are not talking about technologies, but sometimes people just want to show all the gadgets and all the technology and all of that. And sometimes the audience is not what they are into it. Sometimes it's something that it's simple, it's going to work better than the, the latest trend in terms of technology, okay? So just make sure what people are comfortable with. And then I have another question, which is, what questions do you ask your visitors to know if they have a great experience or story? I mean, when I did travel plot, I had like a whole questionnaire, okay, with questions. Once again, you can see that on the thesis because the questionnaire is there. And I actually uh, followed, there was a paper with a professor that he was, um, uh, rating experiences so i use his model and then i adapt it to the to the questionnaire i i actually sent him the questionnaire telling him oh i adapted your your work so can you just please make sure that this is uh, this is okay so that's how i measure experience okay so i'm just going to also put that line on the chat david and let's see if i have any more questions I don't think so. No. no. So we have a. Oh, one, have more. Yeah, one, one, one more. One more. <laughs> From Victor. Is it necessary to have a different storytelling approach to different immersive uh, media? It is. Okay. Just because technically it's very different. For example, when you are using VR, okay, uh, when people arrive to the experience, we need time to know where we are, for example. So we need more time 
uh, because we need to look around and we need to make sure where we are. If you are using other, for example, if it was a video or something like that, then the beginning can be much faster because we are already into it. So yes, different approaches are necessary, but the elements of storytelling, like this structure, the beginning, middle, and an end, that's always present, okay? But the way that you apply it changes. Okay. Yeah. Thank Thanks. So thank you so much. You're Wonderful. welcome. Yeah. Thank you very much for the invitation and enjoy the rest of the conference because I saw all the speakers and it's awesome. Okay, so make sure that you just uh, watch uh, the rest of the conference. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.